The minute I start feeling anxious, the minute I start feeling depressed, the minute I start feeling isolated, the minute I start feeling defeated, the minute I start feeling whatever it is that's not positive, I turn that energy, I just look over here and I go, I, I, I just assume the role of a hero, I start writing. Today's episode of Below the Line is with Brian Callen. Brian is an actor, comedian, writer, podcaster, and he's one funny guy. He's also not just hilarious, but he's extremely articulate and very well read. It's a phenomenal conversation on the inner journey of creation, what happens between the ears. We talk about how you deal with chaos, why he's so interested in philosophy, post-traumatic stress, post-traumatic growth, and a whole lot in between. It's a fascinating conversation with one fascinating guy. And if you like these kinds of conversations, right? The intersection of creation, psychology, philosophy, then ever so lightly tap that subscribe button, but smash the bell on YouTube, smash the hell out of the bell. Tap the subscribe on any of your podcast players or in YouTube, but then smash the bell, then jot a comment, juice all of the algorithms with everything or not, feel free to just take and enjoy the episode, but give nothing in return. That's also, that's up to you. I wouldn't prefer that, but it is your choice. And without further delay, let's get into it with Brian Callen. This is Below the Line. Brian? Yes, sir. Thank you for coming on. Always, podcast. always a pleasure with my my dear friend James Bashara. It, it really is. You a seem pleasure. to have a um, a very pronounced effect, a positive effect on the people I bring you around. They all want to hang out. They all want your number afterwards. Oh, right. Like that tall, skinny guy. Who is that guy? That's what I get. Like, hey, huh? do you have that tall guy's number? He seemed like a smart guy. Hmm. Dude. But I always do this too. I always go. I always introduce you quietly. I go. Now, James Bashar, a nice guy, but um, he's uh, he's one of the top angel investors in the past 10 years in the <laughs> world. I do that, then I let that sit, and they go, really? And I go, yeah. But he's just not worried about money now. He's interested in getting closer to God, and he's so ambitious that he chose to go beyond coffee, decided <laughs> coffee wasn't good for his heart, so he's invented his own coffee, quote unquote, with mushrooms. So that's the kind of dude we're dealing with. Dude, that's what I say. I say, uh, he, he coffee isn't good enough for him, and... He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to get to know God. He wants to get closer to God. That's an ambitious dude. Like <laughs> well, Jesus sits dude, next to. He wants to sit on the other side of Jesus. You know what? If they're going to put a forty foot mural, mural of him when you're three, four, five, six years old, tell you to be like him. Why don't you grow up wanting to be like him? You yeah, know? that's I. I'm dumbfounded that more people aren't saying, dude. dude he's got the right side. I'll be on the left. That's impressive. Um, but that is spiritually ambitious. Hey, it's there's you know, if you're gonna do it, do it. But uh, all joking aside, yeah, that is one of my favorite aspects. Uh, you're such a unique character, and 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 I don't mean that from like you're unique in the world or you're a talented comedian, you're unique in your you just dude, you cover and this I've told you this four or five times mm. the surface area in our conversations that you can cover, whether it is philosophy whether it is hilarious observational culture whether it is just telling a story from what happened to you an hour ago and making everyone laugh and everything in between those those pillars it's uh it is talking about history talking about how to create you have i'm gonna make you recite that quote that you um that you brought up for theo vaughn two years ago four years ago um that's so brilliant and encapsulated the proper psychology to to create, especially mm. for the creators out there that that like me or maybe like you, beat yourself up over and over again because it's not quite good enough. Yeah, so beautiful. Uh, and we are get, this episode. I'm going to make you, if you don't mind, uh, I'm going to request that you that you recite that. But there's all of these different things. You can touch on them with you seamlessly. It's why. Uh, it's it is a three hour dinner feels like it's two minutes um when well i never understand why people aren't interested in you know 
um, I, I'm always interested in, I think it was David Foster Wallace who said the meaningful difference between things. I, I want to I be able to define for myself the difference between um, ideas, movements, you know, uh, thoughts that sort of changed the human condition, the, the, the leaders of thought. I'm, I'm interested in that. I'm interested what do you in mean difference. by differences? I'm interested why, in why the difference in... between Freudians, for example, the Freudian revolution and, and the existential revolution. I'm interested in that. I want to know. It's, it's, it's all opinions on, on the human condition, right? On whether or not you are flawed because that is what you are brought into the world as, a limited creature. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested in the notion that I think it was John Locke who said all knowledge comes from experience. So you're born a blank slate. And Carl Jung said, not so. There are there are certain uh, psychic archetypes, psychic structures within us that seem to be there from birth, a priori structures that 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 are that are that are not grounded in experience. In fact, they come from they're They're almost like a a, a, a blueprint, a pattern. And, and he, he found that from interviewing patients who had psychosis and saw that people who were psychotic in Brazil had very similar, um, I suppose, mythic constructs in their heads, stories, fears uh, that people in, say, Michigan did, but they'd never come into contact with each other in totally different cultures. I'm interested in that stuff. I think it's fascinating because maybe I'm a romantic. Maybe I I, I do believe in. I think you know, I I actually think, I really think that almost all of our differences. If you were to break human beings into two teams, I really think that there's team atheist and team god. I think mm. everything stems from that either optimism or pessimism. I'm really serious. And it I is don't, interesting and I, and, as a side note that you're. That your fixation or uh, your fascination comes from the differences in things. It does, and it comes from it. I suppose I'm profoundly religious without having ever grown up in any form of religion. And I, we can get really? into that because I know you wanted to talk about false allegations and what that leads to because I think the, it ties into that. I want to talk about everything that goes on in the in your in between your ears in yeah. terms of creating, in terms of uh, well. Just the last how long? Well, Twenty five years of creating. Yeah, there are two aspects to creation. Creating, one is inspiration. How, how do you develop? So, so you can be creative a lot of times, um, especially when. See, it's funny because people are the most creative. It seems they their their opus comes out of a time when they are young and desperate to be heard, or young and full of wonder. Mm -hmm. Einstein, I think he came up with his theory of relativity when he was 22 or 26 or something. Um, but, but if you look at, at, at the great ideas in philosophy, even art or mathematics for that matter, they come to people when they're pretty young. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, um, music, for example. I mean, Zeppelin, those guys, Springsteen, they were writing those songs in their 20s mm -hmm. when they were naive enough to believe that they could change the world or, or maybe they were just desperate to... But I think a lot of it comes from the fact that you're you can't believe that it that creativity belongs to you. D Dylan, I couldn't believe Dylan's a good example of that. Yeah, Bob Dylan writing. He can't the songs remember writing then, those songs. Then, yeah, people playing it back for him. He's like, "Ain't that something?" Yeah, because money and all that stuff, and it, it all dulls your instrument if you're not careful. Comfort's mm -hmm. a bad idea for creativity. Mm. It, it just is, and and I think you need to stay uncomfortable. Part of the part of the good thing about crisis. Part of the good thing about destruction, when you're older, if you lose all your money or you um, you go through something, a scandal or you know whatever it might be, it, you're canceled. Like I was in this culture, you say you get canceled. Um, what's the gift of that? Is it puts you into a real crisis because you your night your faith in humanity can be shaken. What's what's difficult about going through a crisis? The loss of someone, a sickness. Um, public humiliation, whatever it might be. We all go through something. Please understand that chaos is coming for you. Mm -hmm. I hope it comes for you on your deathbed. But if you're lucky, and I really mean this, if you're lucky, it'll come to you beforehand. Because I think that chaos, let's just call it chaos, and it's all relative. You know, you can get canceled because somebody says something about you and, you know, you go through two years of wilderness. Okay. You could also have a brain tumor, man. I mean, it gets it's it's much worse. Mm -hmm. 
You could you could lose somebody you love to suicide or to something else. Mm -hmm. We all have crisis. Some children go through the loss of a parent. Some children go through the loss of both parents. And I think that the important thing, if you're an adult, forget children, because children have to be taught how to navigate that. If they don't, it becomes a real problem. But mm -hmm. if you're an adult, I think what's really what's really important and what the gift and how it can help your creativity. Because make no mistake, it can create a very cynical um, outlook on life when you have been unjustly thrown out of whack. Mm -hmm. And all of us believe we've been unjustly thrown out of whack. You know, when we get a sickness, when someone cheats on us, when, whatever it might be, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, when someone lies about us, when someone steals you all your money and you spent five years working for something. We, everybody has In a many story. ways, if you're thrown out of whack and you know it's just, you're kind of like, I'm glad this has happened. Get this over with. Versus, well, that's a different thing. That well, that's can what I'm be... saying. It's The really thrown out of whack is when it is in our minds unjustified of like, what the fuck? I did not. That goes back to, to, to literature. So, so a tragedy is when someone is is thrown out of whack when chaos comes and they don't learn from it. Mm. When they keep raging against it and it destroys them. When they hold fast to their mooring, even though they're mooring, it's, it's Ahab and, and the white whale. Mm -hmm. he, he would not let go of the fact that this whale took his leg and it took him under. And mm -hmm. it took him under. If you read the book, it happens so abruptly and without ceremony. It, there's, no, there's no great music. He just gets sucked under the into the abyss and that's the end of it dude Don, the game over ahab the whole book you read i don't know if you read the, read the book no, but oh my god life's almost too short to read moby dick just because there are long chapters on wailing and all that mm -hmm. but it just goes Hoom. i mean it's it's like and <laughs> boom, and you're like wait a minute is that it you're like hey melville what the fuck man i've been i've been with you this whole time but i think there was a point to that which is that y y y your life will be over before you you know it's like the sopranos like death just comes darkness we'll just pull the plug on that your life it just somebody hits you in the back of the head you're done but but you're supposed to learn if you did something wrong make it right atone you know if, if you didn't keep your promises and if you lied about something justice defined by the greeks is everything in its place mm. if you committed an injustice then put it back in its place. If you didn't commit an injustice and something happened to you, take a look at how you were living your life that exposed you to that. Take responsibility. Accept that it happened. Hmm. Now, a lot of people, let's just say you get screwed over by a business partner. Let's say somebody lies about you and you get canceled. Say you get accused of something you didn't do. You can, you can sit like a tiger in the tall grass and decide you're gonna get revenge. You can plot your revenge. You can, you can try to even the score, mm. right? But as Confucius says, before you seek revenge, remember to dig two graves, one for yourself mm. and one for your enemy. And I think that's very prudent and wise because that's a waste of your fucking time. Because what happened was it was just chaos, bro. It was chaos. It was like a twister that came in and mm -hmm. killed one of your family members and took your house. It's going to happen. It's part of the human experience. You can gripe. You can let it destroy you. You can let it turn you bitter. You can let it turn you uncreative. You can let it, uh, it send you on a long journey for revenge. You can do all that, sure, if you want. But there's another way to look at it. And that is that this is part of life. This is part of being a human being. This is, this is I have been cast into the desert. Mm. I am like the Israelites wandering the desert after being liberated from the Egyptians, and I'm here for 40 fucking years, mm -hmm. okay? And you can choose, and I've done, this has been, I, I say this to anybody going, when you wake up in the middle of the night with anxiety, if, if the world looks like it's closing in on you, and you are lost, and you're scared, and you're worried, you got to go through that. You got to go through that. But let me explain something to you, and do this. this and by great. the way, anyone listening to this, especially given that, the 10,000 listeners, each episode are founders that are in many times the abyss. That yes. They have, they, maybe it looks like they've got it going no. on on the outside internally. Every company 
is a shit show. If you're a founder, and, you have to solve all these problems. Right. You're dealing and with things are burning. Human problems. You're dealing with innovation, trying to stay relevant, competing with people that come up with better ideas, mm -hmm. insecurity about your own ideas. Is this going to catch on? All your on? best people are leaving or you're afraid of them leaving. You're usually on the precipice of professional life or death. You, that, failed, you failed more than you've succeeded already. Right. I, I get it. And, and, and so this is for them. And what I, what I, what I realized was that I, I woke up and I was, I was just anxious. I have a new baby. I'm 55. I have this wonderful woman in congrats, my life. Congrats, Thank you. Brother. I have, you know, but I'm starting a new, I'm, I'm losing my relevance a little bit as a comic. I'm older. All my friends are younger. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting a new business, which is good, but there's so many challenges, man. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I'm exhausted thinking about it. Right. Mm. And then I thought to myself, hold it, man, hold it. What if, what if I actually, I, I, I physically cocked my head and I looked over here and I said, what, what, is, what is the best version of myself? I mean, really. I mean, the hero in my movie. If my life was a movie, the hero of that movie, who is, who is the best version of Brian? I'm talking about the Brian Callen that's not afraid of death, that's not afraid of anything, that lives 100% truthfully. That is, that is a master at self-restriction, doesn't eat too much, keeps the ribs on him. Like his fucking, you know, what's it called? Dick skin on his stomach. I'm talking about like a junkyard dog, man. But kind, kind, truthful, open, right? At the same time, strong, strong, afraid of nothing. Maybe I am afraid, but I'll proverbially, I'll fight, I'll fight, I'll fight the whole world. Like in, 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 in the way George slayed the dragon, right? Like, you know, that, mm, that idea, yeah. I mean, really key into the hero, key into who the hero is. Cause all of us want to be a hero, but God, it's so hard. Like, it's just, oh, my house is warm and you know, I'd rather have, I'd rather just fucking have a glass of wine and relax. And we all have this, it's a constant battle, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about learning how to really talk to yourself. I'm talking about taking that voice, that snake that always seems to be in the back of your head and says, bro, this too much. Somebody's going to take it from you anyway. Even mm -hmm. if you do this, if money doesn't buy happiness, nothing buys happiness anyway. This is all a fool's errand. And a lot of shit can just happen anyway. You, you work your whole life. What if somebody, what if a stray bullet hits you in the spine? A thousand things you go mm -hmm. through. If you're me, I got all those voices of, of defeat, all that self-doubt. And what if I just turn all of that energy, because that's what it is, into creativity. The minute I start feeling anxious, the minute I start feeling depressed, the minute I start feeling isolated, the minute I start feeling defeated, the minute I start feeling whatever it is that's not positive, I turn that energy, I just look over here and I go, I, I, I just assume the role of a hero, I start writing. I start thinking about the things I'm supposed to think about. I start solving those problems I've been procrastinating about. I literally cha train my brain to take anxiety as an engine, as an angel, as an angel, not a demon, an angel pushing me in the direction that I dared not even look at. I mean, when you really think about your, the best version of yourself, it's really, really scary because it forces you to take responsibility for, for what you know you're actually capable of. I mean, your full potential. You may never reach it, but boy, oh boy, even reaching for it is scary. We come up with a thousand ways to ensure that we kind of reach halfway. Mm. You know, you know, when you when you when you box and you throw, you throw all the way that, that, like that. A lot of times you'll see guys in the UFC or boxers, they're they're really careful. They're man, bop, bop, you know, they're they're throwing short hooks, bop, they're stopping here, you know, they're doing this. Why? Because they know that something's coming back immediately. So you got to be really you're measuring. You bop, you come back. Measure bop, mm -hmm. you know, bop, bop, you're measuring all the time. When you throw that hook, when you throw a lead hook, or when you, when you watch Ali, but if you watch Ali throwing a, a lead right hand, if you know anything about boxing, he's with Foreman, he starts throwing a lead right hand. You're not, doing that against an elite boxer is nuts. There's a, if, you, if you watch, I think it was when we were kings. He's throwing a lead right hand. That's so outrageous. You, when you're here and you throw a lead right hand without setting it up, just out of nowhere, Boxers see that coming a mile away. It was like Fury saw that with, with Deontay Wilder a mile away. He could see it. 
And so he would just roll it, slip, move back. I mean, you know, and by the way, you're really opening yourself up to get knocked out when you mm-hmm. do that. And Ali threw, I think, like seven or eight of them. I mean, it was such an insult. It was like, I don't care how fat you're a pro boxer. You want to be a world champion? Watch this. Boom, boom. That's an act of faith. That takes tremendous courage because you're you're willing to take all the risk. And I think founders can understand that. So I'm sorry to be so long-winded. No, it's- but uh, My, my of- point is, look at the worst version of yourself. You know what that is. But dare to look at the best version of yourself and actually reach for it and actually allow all that stress, all that doubt to be an angel that pushes you in that direction. It's just a reminder. It's a reminder that you're, you've stopped. It's a reminder that there is, the hero is waiting for you right over here. With your career of spanning several decades, top comedian in the world, um, uh-huh. it's, uh, one of my favorite roles in any movie, The Godfather and Old School, mm. um, spanning just many, many. I'm the guy. I'm the actor who did a lot of small parts in big movies. Keep going. <laughs> well, no, but also your own shows. Yeah. And just about as much. I imagine about as much success as you ever could have imagined before your drive or your flight out here. I, I imagine. I or I don't think I'm. I don't feel successful. But okay. I mean, okay. Well, let's as the the setup for this question at least. I would imagine for many people, yes, that are setting out to well. go to the the epicenter of the, an industry that they're wi- willing wanting to break into. Let, let's put it this way: Yes, my own TV show, my own sitcom, starring in that. Yes, and uh, and then being on not just the Goldbergs, but having my own show. That yes, um, selling TV shows. Yes. Uh, well, not not, but but have coming up with concepts that people wanted to buy, and and then COVID and things. But 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 stand up, doing yeah. uh, really doing what I think you know. I think my last special, Complicated Apes, was something that you know the the rate it, it, it was. I think it was one of the best things I've done. I just it's I'm awesome. proud of it. Yeah. I'm proud of it. That's all. I I, I think I, I did what I I surprised myself with that. In my opinion, just it was satisfying. And then having a huge podcast, all these things that I set out to do. Yes, those things happen. So I guess that's successful. And it, and making it, enough easily. money to not worry about things. Yes. And, yeah. it, no, easily. And yeah. uh by I think any any objective or subjective definition, do you think just in in this the last few decades of your career and creating, um, how much has martial arts played a role? You mentioned writing, you mentioned um being able to to take responsibility, but also um see this anxiousness as a, as an angel that's pushing you mm-hmm. all these things. And then you mentioned the, the metaphors with, with boxing, how much has martial arts played a role in your ability to roll with the punches? Uh, well, you know, um, it's a, it's a great question because I always liked martial arts came out of my insecurity. You know, I wanted, I didn't want to be, you know, as a wrestler, I didn't have to take shit from the football players that made them in high school. Mm. That meant a lot to me, you know. I just wanted to be the guy who, if I wasn't going to be 230 pounds, at least I'd, I'd keep you busy in a bar. That was in my mind, right? Yeah. I just uh-huh. wanted to be, I couldn't stand to be the kid who had sand kicked in his face. Mm. I was just terrified of that. And I wasn't, I wasn't big and I was always afraid. I was, I, you know, I was, I always felt like a cat among dogs, a big, you know, you, I got friends who are football players and, and I was always like, Jesus, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bulk and meat here, you know, it's, it's hard to navigate. I'm 170 pounds and 5'11", and it's, it's just, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm, it's just a lot, you know, mm. but I was always that guy who didn't, I wasn't built to get into the scrum, as it were. Mm. So I just, I was fascinated with the idea that technique, like as a wrestler, you know, when I started to realize that as a wrestler, I could take down, I remember the, this middle linebacker in my high school, big guy tried to wrestle with me, but he didn't know what he was doing. And I think I did like, I threw, I did a, I used it like a, a Greco throw that he had never Greco Roman is, if you guys don't know, it's like a, it's an upper body throw, but it would never work against a regular wrestler, but I, he was just so heavy on his left side. So I pushed to the right and I just, I just, I just threw and it worked and he just went flying, but I kind of knew it would. And I was, I, I love that sort of idea of understanding how to, um, use someone's strength, their weight against them. There's, it's just a language, right? Mm-hmm. Then I then then you learn how to do that with kickboxing, or you learn how to do that with. So when you're actually sparring with somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, even though they're a good athlete, they look like they're moving in slow motion. 
Mm. And the reason that you're able to hit somebody or kick somebody when they don't know what they're doing or they're a novice is because they don't understand the patterns that you have. Mm. It's patterns. I'm getting you to think I'm doing something and then I'm, but you don't see the, the it's the punch you don't see that causes you problems, right? Mm. And I always was fascinated with that, with, with negotiating that sort of mid distance, that long distance, that idea of, of um, how to put your foot or fist or elbow uh, where it counts, you know, mm. how to set that up, how to split hands, all that, the science of boxing, the science of footwork is such a difficult thing. But I loved it. I mean, I, I still am fascinated with it. I, I, I love, I maybe because it's, um, maybe because, and I think the reason most of us as men at least are, are sort of, we key in to a world champion when he walks into a room. We just look at him. I don't care how, who you are. You go, hey, this guy's got the neck and the ears and look at his hands. And, this. and I think part of that is because on a primordial level, on a primal level, all of us as young, when you're young, it, it's different when you're older because you have a common enemy when you're among a bunch of 50 year olds and six year olds and that common enemy is time. And mm. uh, we're all gonna die. Like nobody gets out of this alive when all of us could die at any second now. So that kind of the foot race and the, the martial arts, the fighting. Eh. But when you're younger and you meet a man, in some ways, the first question in your mind, whether you want to admit it or not, is can he kill me or can I kill him? Mm -hmm with our bare hands. We are cavemen. The, 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 the primary question, I'm telling you the primary question, and then there's, and then- For females everything. listening, if you don't have that, that thought pattern, um, I can at least speak from my own experience. That is very true. And the reason I know it is I'm pretty tall and it never crosses my mind unless someone's taller than me, I have this algorithm that runs and I'm like super peaceful guy, but I have an algorithm that runs of like, oh shit, that that dude's taller than me. Yeah, he's bigger than me. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, and then honestly, I think my congenial side kicks in of like, get on his side. <laughs> he, that's right. Well, that's what we're also we're competitive apes. We're also cooperative apes. So apes, human beings, learn how to how to uh, kill from a distance using tools, but they also learn how to organize. Hmm. They learn, and chimps do that too. You know, when when the male, the biggest, baddest chimp, is being a tyrant. The uh, the females sometimes or the lesser the beta males get together and they'll kill that motherfucker, mm. you know. So so that's kind of what human beings do. The first thing we do is we go. If I can't kill that guy, I can I can form alliances. You mm. know, I can form an alliance. I don't think it's a mistake that a lot of shorter men seem to be you know the captains of industry. And right. Not always, but you know, no, it's uh, uh, you know the founder of uh, the CEO of. Airbnb's shorter guy, Jeff Brian, Bezos, Br I mean, brilliant, brilliant sure. founder. I love him, but yeah, shorter guy. Well, he would always comment on my height. Would yeah, always, yeah. he'd probably always. fifteen times would yep. be like, James, how tall are you? It, yep. it, like, just it was men, over and men over. Are and that over. way. I'm yeah. that way. You know, I'm I'm not short, but I I notice an imposing man because it, for me, you know, I'm so physical. I love all of that, but I see a dude like that. I'm like, that guy'd be hard to hurt. I don't want to fight that guy in an elevator. Mm. It's just what, you know, and, and, and if you do any kind of sports or you ever did do a sport, it's pathetic that at 55, I'm still talking about <laughs> wrestling. It's sad. No, it's, I don't think it's, the but, reason but it's I, embarrassing. Well, know? the reason I actually asked you to bring it up is because it's, I took to surfing t uh, a year and a half ago. And one of the best, one of the most meaningful parts of it is that in surfing, you have to go into the wave to not get clobbered by the way. If you're not yeah. even if you're going to take it. Yeah. If you're just trying to avoid the impact zone, mm -hmm. you're paddling towards a a wall of water yeah. that is, you know, an 8-foot wave is probably four suburbans of water yeah. that will crash on you and you you have to psychologically say, no, 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 it's not going away from this. I actually to get out of destruction's way i need to go towards it and i realized whoa this is such a fascinating rewiring of my mind it's very hard in a professional s sense in a in a social setting to go into fear it happens like work wise boxing, like boxing, once a month you have a hard a, conversation work yeah. but boxing i imagine well, you, so floyd mayweather is the greatest defensive boxer um um if you look at floyd mayweather and you look at bernard hopkins two of my favorite boxers 
the reason they were so great at defense, and for that matter, actually, Roberto Duran, the greatest slip box, like this, he could slip shots. W- when you look at the great boxers, they're not blocking shots. That's why with karate, like the, the old Shotokan, they would teach you to block shots. Mm. Anybody who's teaching you to stand still and block shots has never been in a real fight. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. If you have a great boxing coach, like a, a, a real boxing, like a, like one of those old school dudes, whether it was Eddie Futch or whatever, that yeah, yeah, your hands are up and stuff and you can block, but, it, but they're teaching you where to stand and how, where to move your head and how to move your head so that you are out of the way of the shots, so that you are circling t- toward his jab, for example. If he's a southpaw, you're winning that corner with your back foot, whatever it might be. There are different ways to do it so that you're not in what's called the pipe. You're down the pipe. You're not in, your head is off, what they call it, your head is off the line. So, so Why is the that wave, important? because the wave is, you got to learn how, you can't block a wave, bro. Mm-hmm. You got to be able to surf a wave. You got to be able to go under a wave or go over the wave. Mm-hmm. Boxing is no different. A life is no different. You don't want to learn how to block a punch. You want to learn how to slip, duck, or step back and get out of the way of a punch. That's mm. that that therein lies the path of least resistance, and that is how you survive. And you don't you're not punch drunk by the time you're not eating out of a straw by the time you're thirty. Mm. Okay, standing in a phone booth and banging might be fun to watch, but Floyd Mayweather's uncle and father who are high level prize fighters said to that kid hey this is about boxing this is not fighting you want to get out of the way of those shots okay you want to be able to you want your body you want to be understand how to make him swing and miss Mm. not swing and catch elbows and catch because if you tried that with guys like duran duran was famous for this he'd go okay you're going to cover up you're going to turtle up and take my shots i'm going to hit your arms so hard for the first three or four rounds that your arms are going to be dead. You're not going to be able to use your arms. I'm going to punch the shit out of your arms. That's what they would do. And he's a defensive, and he was known as a defensive Yes, that's what Lomachenko does. Those guys, they'll they'll pound on. If you try to just stand there and take it, like they're going to hit you in the arms. They're going to punch your shoulders, your elbows. They're going to hit your, where you, like the muscle. You're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to lift your arms in four rounds. So. So they give you one option, which is to punch at them and you. You want to. You just want to be out of the way. You want to slip punches. You want to be ducking. You want to be moving. You want to avoid punches. You you want them catching air, rather than any part of your body. Mm-hmm. So that might be the analogy I'm using in, in in relation to surfing. You can't block a wave. You can't block a punch. And and but on on martial arts, there's there's more I want to talk about in 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 relation to your life. I've always been fascinated with. And by the way, the reason this is this is interesting to me is because it's I think it is these these side hobbies that allow these contained sandbox versions of psychological scenarios that then allow someone to and get hit with life and they're like, oh, I know this movie, mm-hmm. I know how this goes. I I not even it's not even knowing instinctually some program runs yeah that was already there. They used to um, say about Duran, the guy's reading my mind. And he wasn't reading your mind. He just knew the patterns because he'd been there and he saw your patterns before you did. He knew what you were going to do. He goes, I know what he's going to do here. He threw a right and a left. Now he's going to slip, but my hand's going to be waiting for him. So he could. He was ahead of you. It's like chess players. They're really good. At, they could beat you because they've seen the board a thousand times and they, mm-hmm. they, they see the... This, they see where your where all your pieces are, and they go. I I know he's got four options here, and because he's I've seen his tendencies, he's going to do this. But I'm I'm going to cut him off. That's why they mm. beat you so easily. Mm. Do, you, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's a but, but, a, but more the martial arts. I'm less interested in martial arts. I've been always interested in fighting. There's a difference. It's why I love MMA. Why do they call it mixed martial arts? Because you cannot go into an octagon or a cage with with one set of skills. You can't be orthodox. You can't be a purist. You can't be a judoka only. You cannot be an Olympic wrestler only. You cannot be an Olympic boxer only. You cannot be a high-level kickboxer only. You will get knocked out. It doesn't matter. You have to understand all of them. You have to understand fighting. You have to understand how to kick, punch, wrestle, neutralize wrestling, neutralize the takedown. You have to understand submissions. And if you don't understand submissions, at least you have to understand how to stop submissions. You have to understand all the different ways to neutralize an opponent who has a lot of different tools in his toolbox. 
okay? He's going to be throwing a lot of tools at you. He might kick at your calf. He might, you know, he might throw a left hook. He might do both. He might double leg you when you least expect it and take you to the ground. He might then go to work with his jujitsu. You have to have an answer to all those things, mm. okay? And what I think is relevant, the reason I bring up mixed martial arts versus just pure Taekwondo, just pure wrestling, just pure Judo, just pure Muay Thai, the reason I really appreciate mixed martial arts is I think that's a great metaphor for how you have to be as a thinker. I think you have to have, you have to be a mixed mental artist. You have to read broadly and widely and be responsive to evidence and be willing to change your mind and to not hold too closely to one particular set of, I guess, or uh, be flexible in your intellectual architecture. Always be willing to add new rooms to your house and maybe shut down rooms that are no longer inhabitable. Mm. Okay. And, and, and what you'll see, uh, what you'll really see is that, and I think Hunter Motz was talking about this the other day at our dinner. What you'll see is that people tend to become experts in a particular field. Let's take Ibram Kendi and his book, How to Be an Anti-Racist, or ta Coates and his work, and I like his writing. Um, the problem with those guys is they seem to see everything in life, and I mean everything through the lens of racism, everything. And of course, the problem with that is that not everything is racism. It, you can't apply one tool, one lens, one outlook to all of the world. You'll never get anywhere. You'll be great at teaching a particular course and maybe indoctrinating students into your way of thinking for a while, but you're not doing much to move the debate forward. And I'm not picking on Ibram Kendi, even though I think his book is terrible and I read it carefully, but um, th there are a lot of people like that. There are a lot of professors that study one thing and they apply it to everything. There are a lot mm -hmm. of... Um, there are a lot of uh, doctors. political doctors, 100%. That's a great example. A lot of, lot of political thinkers as well, but doctors is a great example, right? You, 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 if you want to learn health, you can't go to an oncologist. They've studied, you can't go to a specialist in pancreatic cancer. They can help you with that particular issue, but they're not going to be able to teach you about health in general. Mm -hmm. You want to go to somebody who studied the whole body, right? You want to go to somebody who studied health. More than Not three hours maybe. of nutrition. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we all have this liability. All of us have this liability. We'll never get out of it. But you can mitigate that liability by being open to, by being a mixed mental artist, the way you'd be a mixed martial artist. You, you can't just study one technique. It reminds me of Charlie Munger, um, who's Warren Buffett's partner, always talking about cross-lattice work of mental models. So key for he's become one of the best investors of all time and talks about this cross lattice work of mental models that is to exactly this point of there's going to be a dynamic situation and you need to employ a dynamic set of tools for a dynamic situation. It cannot be all right, this person's passed out and I'm a pancreatic uh, oncologist. Let's start cutting open and removing parts of the pancreas. Right. That is uh, right. far from progress or that's far right. from helpful. Um, and that's the, the problem with algorithms now, the way they push you in mm -hmm. one direction or the other. Boy, I get sucked into that. I mean, you know, if you if you Google, go, go ahead and like look up on YouTube, just type in Tucker Carlson, then Ben Shapiro, then Jordan Peterson. All you got to do is that and you'll get just nothing but right of center, mm -hmm. you know, eye candy right and it's just not the way to develop a nuanced point of view or or i guess a point of view worth having i mean i i i think it's a liability mm -hmm. so yeah it doesn't That's, help you know? the in in that in that uh you call it mixed mental arts mm. when for for a creator out there a founder a someone that gardens um, what's an example where you've employed kind of a, a mixed mental arts approach in the last like month or two, if not last week where you've been like, okay, I'm a comedian. I know you have a, you have a couple of gigs. Uh, you have a, you got a show tonight, yeah. but you're not just a comedian. You're not just employing. 
Well, a I, 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 you know, part brain. of what I do, part of it might be, you know, I, I have this new sort of business where I come up with funny assets for different brands. I come up with ways to build interest around their brands, and I think the best way to do that is through humor, and I and and do it inexpensively and do it, you know. Um, do it quickly and where, it, where it's not a big to do, but be very creative with, you know, let's say one room. What can you do in one room with the product mm -hmm. to make it hilarious and make people actually watch and build awareness around that brand with humor? <clears throat> well, the different brands, you know, different brands and, and part of, you know, getting people's attention in this, in, that's an impossible task, right, with all this noise, but part of finding the signal in that noise for your client is is to uh, try to, uh, and and this goes for coming up with a new comedy and 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 writing something different. Is is tr coming up with ways to shake up your own psychic architecture. You know, the, the most creators, in my opinion, certainly most writers, most storytellers, most painters, probably most artists in general are almost always concerned with one major question there that my, my concern has always been what is a man what, what is how do you define a man what, what is what do you mean by courage and does courage actually exist or is courage something that happens when you actually know how to navigate your way you know onto that giant wave or you know how to stay out of the way of that monster while he's punching you or try to choke you unconscious. You don't really believe in yourself until you've been given the map for how to do these things. If I, if I, if you put me in on in a level five rapids or whatever the, you know, mm -hmm. with a little kayak, I'm going to be screaming and crying and screaming for my mommy. It's not until you give me two years or three years of practice. And I understand how to do that, that I'm going to be a little more calm. Right. The minute you get punched in the face, if you, when you go into, first of all, if you get in a ring and you start sparring, I don't care who you are, you stop breathing. You forget to breathe. And then you get hit in the face even a little bit. And what do you do? You put your hands in your face and you put your head down. You literally, you, it's, it's, I don't care who you are, I don't care how brave you are, it's what happens. And it's not until you're taught how to make yourself smaller, keep your eyes open and look. And so, you know, um, mm. I think that part of, to answer your question, is you you have to be good at or learn how to, shake up your your uh the way you think maybe you've got to start kind of how do you do that it's really hard but I, I i have a solution i talked to bill burr about this who's a comic and i and i believe this is the case um do something um start doing something a hobby that you're not good at maybe that scares you a little bit take a mm. couple risks if you're afraid of the sea, get on a surfboard and paddle out into rough water. I mean, don't be, don't put yourself in real danger. But you know, if if you're, um, if you hate heights, uh, jump out of a plane with a parachute. You know, do something, or at least, uh, you know, I don't know. If you're afraid of public speaking, try to do five minutes of stand up. I mean, th this is extreme examples, but what's something you've you've donned? I you've you know I to... hate the ocean and I hate rough ocean. And I, and I don't like, you know, uh, I really hate the ocean at night. I'm terrified of it. And I was in uh, the south of France with my buddy. And he goes, uh, let's go. Do you want to go surfing? And it was raining. It was very rough. And it was dusk, almost night. That's when all the big boys, all the big old sharks come out. And mm -hmm. I'm terrified. I'm a baby. <laughs> I'm a fucking baby. But I needed to do something, man. I was going through. I was I was in a dark place, and when I was. was uh, this was this summer, this past summer, and I was just I was having a hard time, and um, and I said, uh, I'm in. I just said, yeah, I'm doing it, and I put on a wetsuit. It was cold. It was rainy. It was blowing, and the waves. It was dangerous, and uh, I got on that fucking uh, surfboard, and I just I just paddled out to sea. And I mean, the waves were like where you have to be like, you have to catch the wave before, you know, like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, I'm not a surfer. Mm -hmm. I can swim pretty well, you know, but I just had no business being out there. And uh, at one point, one of the surfers had to tow me. <laughs> I was getting sucked by the undertow or what was it? Oh, the wow. Riptide yeah. Riptide, over yeah. toward the rocks. So he had to kind of get me out of that. It was, a, it was hairy. For me, it was hairy, you know. 
but um, it was very uncomfortable. Were you freaking out? It was no, it, it was, uh, no, because it was very, very uncomfortable though, and uh, and I did it because I knew it would shake me up. Mm. I wanted to, I wanted to face my fears. I wanted to kind of get. I wanted to just, I wanted to look at the dragon for a little bit. That little ding is the sound of cold, hard, digital, invisible cash going right into your pocket. And by pocket, I mean your digital Shopify account that might be on your phone in your pocket. At least that's the case for us in Magic Mind. Shopify allows you to go from first sale to full scale, and it has for us. Magic Mind has one full-time employee, and we've gotten to 5 million in annualized sales using Shopify. Me, William, our amazing GM, and Shopify. It is the no-brainer for any e-commerce stack that you've ever thought of. If you're, if you're selling online and you're running into issues left and right, Shopify is a solution. If you're thinking of selling online, it is the dream scenario of being able to get your first sale, scale to millions in sales. And we haven't done this yet, but when we do move into physical retail, when we move into physical shops, start building our own, you can actually go from online with Shopify to offline with Shopify and everything is in beautiful little dashboard on your phone. I love checking it. You can check it, you know, as you're going to sleep, you just open it up and see your exact sales for the day. You even see tips on how to improve conversion rates, improve your store. Shopify is literally, when I say it's the dream, I mean, it. it is the dream and we've got a special hookup for listeners. So wait for that in a sec. You can reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. This is one of my favorite favorite parts about Shopify is it has this ecosystem of thousands of third-party apps, developers, and teams that are building awesome features for the Shopify ecosystem. So you're getting way more than just Shopify. You're getting thousands of, of applications built to refine the customer experience for all of your customers. We use probably eight or nine of these different apps that Shopify doesn't even build, but it's teams building for the Shopify ecosystem. And were we on a different platform, we just wouldn't have access to this thou these thousands of third-party applications to make magicmind.com so powerful. You gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting on conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. This is possibility powered by Shopify. Go to shopify.com slash below the line, all lowercase, for a 14-day, free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. And this is a unique offer for below the line. You're going to get something special when you sign up with that slash below the line. So make sure to enter that. It is not offered to everybody. So go to shopify.com slash below the line, all lowercase. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash below the line, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash below the line. Grab your EpiPens because this episode is also brought to you by Chargebee. Imagine this, you're launching your subscription product and you need to invoice your first few customers. You integrate with a payment gateway, write some code to support recurring billing, and you start charging things up. Stuff seems to work until you need to create tax compliant invoices or set up flexible trials and run pricing experiments. Yikes. Or integrate with more than one gateway. Yoinks. Billing needs grow as business needs grow. Every line of code you write for your billing system contributes to the spaghetti nightmare that will keep you away from your core product. Don't do that. Chargebee is here to help. We replace in-house billing systems and spreadsheets by giving teams the ability to set up subscription plans and trials, run pricing experiments at scale, analyze accurate subscription analytics, accept multiple payment methods, and much, much more right out of the box. Chargebee works with global payment gateways like Stripe, Braintree, PayPal, everybody, and integrates with essential tools like HubSpot, Bear Metrics, Xero, QuickBooks, Salesforce, and much more. Charge B, charge B, charge B. The journey to the first million is often the hardest. To help you get there faster, we're offering free access to Charge B's Rise Plan. This offer is valid until you hit your first million dollar 
million dollars in revenue. This is a meeting that goes back two weeks ago. Me and the CEO, we, I said, this isn't enough at 500K. This isn't enough at 750. This offer should be valid until customers hit their first million in revenue. And that's how we came to this decision. So you don't have to worry about billing and subscription management in the marathon that is running your business. To avail the services. Love that. I'm going to start using that phrase as often as possible. To avail the services. Sign up for a ChargeBee account with the link in our show notes for chargebee.com slash partners. Sign up and enter your details with the coupon code BTL for below the line BTL. And then you complete your sign up within seconds. Super easy. Charge B rocks. Oh, well, we will we'll talk about the the highs, epic highs and and highlights of your creative journey. And we will definitely get to those because it's like we've already touched on some pretty rare ground that your creative journey has taken you to within that summer what was what was going on on the on the other side of the coin the the low points um i just was still dealing with the residual effects of my cancellation i think i was just dealing with not so much of what you worry about is is just not knowing how you're going to get out of a situation how you're going to reinvent yourself how how are you going to deal with your age and and the fact that you built you spent all this time building something and you're in you're alone you're isolated see see um you know the yeah, Freudian, do you mind? i want the long form on on this Ed. yeah well so 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 let, let me this is kind of um this is freudian right but like i think freud talked about three stages one was you know there are three sort of seminal moments in a in a person's life one is the first is when you separate from your mother mm. when you make the separation from your mother and the second is when you separate from your father, meaning when you no longer rely on the embrace of your family, on the, mm. on the protection of your family, of your home, of, of their help, of mm -hmm. their ability to help you. you know, when, when, and, and the third is when you actually venture out on your own, where you take full responsibility for where you are, who you are, and what you are going to become. So when you're born, when you separate from your father. Mother first. Or, okay, when you separate from your mother. Yep. You separate from your father. Yes. And then when you go, go at it alone. Yes, and I think there's a lot of truth to that. And I, 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 I think if you really look at, you know, if you really think about it, most of us in one way or another are always relying on something or someone. It's why we like to partner up, right? It's like mm -hmm. we like to kind of like just have someone with us along this scary journey man it's fucking scary right. to go you know into the underworld or under the castle or whatever the hero's journey to, wherever it takes you but you you there's no way you you have to you have to wander the desert alone you have to mm -hmm. and i think i was i was separating myself i think i was i think i was i think i was cast in i felt like i was cast in the wilderness and i and i really did have to solve all these problems on my own i had to actually figure out a way to finally in many ways grow up because i identify as peter pan i got away with being peter pan for a long time mm. you can as a comic it worked mm. for me silly goose i'm very good at making people laugh mm -hmm. and it's all good bro the party's here the mm -hmm. party's here but there's 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 a form. It's a in many form ways of people a, need that from you. They do, and I'll never lose that. I'll never be stop being a silly goose. Don't don't kid yourself. There's always you must always be a silly goose until I'm dead. I'll be, be I'll be trying to make people laugh. Very mm -hmm. important. Very fucking important. But um, you also have to. You really do have to. I think f stand on your own and create for yourself the the more the bedrock that you that you made for yourself you you that's what you anchor into so 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 much of the the lie again i'm sorry but the liability that, that that comes with knowledge and education is that all these ideas have been given to you 
they've been given to you and you're mm. standing on this edifice you know this um, i don't know if that's the right word but you're standing on this sort of you know platform of belief and and you know but 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 part of what knowledge the point of knowledge is it, it teaches you the beliefs that you're that, that are worth having mm. right it, it teaches you the ideas that are worth embracing um, but nobody can take that responsibility away for yourself. You, 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 you have to, I suppose, spend enough time alone thinking and accepting that no one can take away the responsibility of being a complete human being. I mean, I, I guess that's why Seneca and Socrates and Aristotle are so relevant today still. They may have written this stuff 3,000 years ago, but they're still just as relevant today because when you read it, man, you go, man, I have an iPhone. I have technology that can push me way beyond my biology. I've got at least a political system that's somewhat representative and I don't have to worry about being, you know, this sort of army of, of Mongols coming in and-, and, and Stealing all my- yeah, yeah, taking me to slavery. But, mm. but I still have the responsibility of figuring this whole life thing out. Mm -hmm. Like living as a complete, ethical, truthful human being, you know, um, and I think that ties into creativity as well, because, you know, if you're a comic, you know, I can come up with tricks and hooks. If I'm a musician, I can come up with tricks and hooks to make a song popular. I can come up with ways to make you laugh. But am I saying something? Mm. You know that that's kind of what happens. I think that's why what is comics, that why is that important? I, I've heard you reference that before. And, well, it's called finding and, your voice. It's important right. because if you want, because the part of what we love about Burr and what we love about um, you know any of the great comics or for that matter artists was that they were saying something. There was a there was a point of view in yeah. their in their expression when and it was filtered through them through this their vessel, which in a way made it original. To, and part to be of honest, I think for many, for many casual observers and, and casual lovers of comedy, they don't even they don't realize that's part of the reason that they love this comic or this. They don't even maybe realize not that or maybe so. I'm not so sure. I agree with you on that. I don't know. I mean, yes, it's it, part of you go to comedy just to laugh, man. Some people are just hilarious, but boy, is it it lasts with you when they mm. get you to think, right? When they get you to kind of. Oh God! When they when an observation is made that you have known for a decade but never articulated, and and yeah. you don't feel alone. Yeah, when Joe Rogan says men can't wear pearls, it's like you're right, but why? <laughs> you know, it sounds stupid, <laughs> but fuck, you know, I, why didn't I think of that? You're right, dude. <laughs> men can't wear pearls, you know. So there there are things like that where you just go, see how you laugh because you didn't even <laughs> think about it. Yeah, it's, it just it, it, surprised the shit out of you, right? You know, totally. When Theo Vaughn reversed a hamster bones as Arkansas Ivory, it's fucking <laughs> unbelievable. You're like, God damn it, you know? Yeah. And and why is he talking about finding a bag a bag of hamster bones? And why is that a story even worth listening to? But it's incredible. When and it's a it's a surprise to us mm. because in a way, what he's talking about, you get a sense of what it was like to be him as a child. Right. This sort of this 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 raggedy <laughs> castaway on an island called Arkansas, where he didn't mm. fit in, and where a bag of hamster bones, whether that's true or not, doesn't matter. It is true mm. because hamster bones is I can see him. I can see the bag. Was, I don't know why I picture a purple bag. I don't know I why. I remember him saying, uh, "Ferret was the." And before he could recall ferret, he's like, "What is that animal? It's a limousine of rats." <laughs> and the guest is like, "I don't know." And then he said, "Oh, ferret." <laughs> and then everybody, a limousine of rats. And, he's and, such a genius. And, and, and everyone was dying laughing except for him because he's just working through. I like, know how the association. Well, he, he did had our his podcast mind. a long time ago. He said, well, "You know, we, we were we were renting out like you know guinea pigs at concerts," and I was like, "Why?" <laughs> It's sometimes you want something warm for your hands, man. You want something warm that moves around in your hands. And I was like, you know, it, 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 that that is unique, and that is, believe it or not, that tells you a lot about not just this boy in Arkansas, but it tells you a lot about yourself. Mm. All of us, all of us have been the person who who came up with a terrible idea for a business, and who also wouldn't mind having something soft for their hands. <laughs> You know, there's there's something about, you know, the, the it's not that he's saying something profound, but he's saying something honest. 
And you know? I and sorry for the diversion, but yeah, you were saying finding your voice, and that is his voice. Um, mm-hmm. Bill Burr has a voice with within that finding it. Why one? Why is it so? Do you mind just underscoring why it's so important? And then two, how the hell do you go about finding that? Well, you know, you could make the argument that the cornerstone of every culture is its artistic expression, right? I mean, I don't think that you know when we think of the the um, and I've talked about this before a lot, but, but, you know, we don't, when you describe a country, like let's take the United States. Okay. And, and you say, well, the United States is a very powerful country. We have incredible weapons systems. We have the most sophisticated weaponry. So we, we can crush any army. And then you also say, um, and we, uh, we can feed the world We're the breadbasket of the world. And we're energy efficient. And we have, we have an incredible stock market, an incredible you know, entrepreneurial spirit in this country. And our standard of living is very high. We can buy what we want and we're, our bellies are always full. And all of that is true. And what you're really talking about is we are, quote unquote, the most powerful country in the world. I've been hearing that since I was, mm. as long as I can remember, words. And many of those years you grew up outside of the country. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we are interesting. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that our culture or the United States is interesting. What makes us interesting, what makes us sort of um, what captures the imagination, yes, is the American dream, which is potential. But I, I really wonder what America would be out like without Motown without the invention of improv, stand-up comedy, rock and roll, the blues, jazz, all those things that we talk about, those things that sort of like movies, Hollywood, invented by a bunch of Jewish emigres, exiles, Jewish refugees, you know, running from oppression, and they 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 created something called Ha, ha, Hollywood, dude. Movie stars, mythology, you know, I mean, in high relief, changed the world, changed everything, changed our value system, gave us our value system, dude, I was thinking gave the, us strength. I was thinking the other day how Tom Petty, a guy with a guitar, great voice, song, all the talent, everything included, was being piped into bedrooms around the entire globe yeah 1987 yeah boom just yeah everywhere thank you thank you technology but that's not the the, 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 but that's right it's 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 the um it's it's something about um and i've always been that's what i that's what really gets me thinking i I guess i'm a romantic that way because it's really hard to measure it's hard to measure the value of something like that you know, I had this joke about um, why it's important, why liberal societies are stronger than conservative societies. And, and I believe that there's a place for conservatives and there is a place for liberals. And, and I was thinking about how, um, you know, I'm old enough to remember when you were very gay, very flamboyant, it was actually physically dangerous for a man. He could get killed, beat up. He'd definitely mm. get ridiculed. You mm. wouldn't get a job. You wouldn't get a job. You'd, you'd be fired if you were found to be gay, for example. Or something. And we got through that. We got through that, man. And, 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 um, and now, you know, if you look at the fashion world, you have men dressing up. They're very gender fluid and all that. I don't know how to measure that value, but I do know that we wouldn't be as interesting without fashion, without people who consider in great detail texture, proportion, color, <laughs> combos of color. I don't, that part mm-hmm. of my brain's still playing with crayons. I'm, this is my, mm-hmm. this is part of my joke. And I was thinking to myself, it's a joke, but I thought to myself, polka dots were probably invented by a very gay man. It's my theory. Like somebody who was super gay saw a ladybug and was like, huh, more, you know? And I don't care about polka dots. I'm I'm a straight man who doesn't that would never be a color scheme for my truck or anything else. I don't wear polka dots, a little bit like Rogan, you know, and, and pearls. But I don't want to live in a world without polka dots. And I don't know how to measure the value of polka dots, but I know it'd be a little more a little less boring, a little more boring without 
polka dots. Mm. I like polka dots. Mm. And, and that's a weird thing to say. That doesn't mean that conservatives and practical, mathematical, rigid thinkers aren't needed in a society. You need them too, trust me. What do you need them for? For, for making sure that the structural <clears throat> integrity of your buildings is where it should be and that the roof doesn't fall in on you for making sure that the planes that land are in a different area than the planes that take off. I want that person made of wood. I want no flexibility in that motherfucker. Okay. So 30 million uh, people could buy polka dot dresses. Uh, right. This is all part of my, I mean, this is, a, I'm touching on some stand up. I hate when comics do stand up, but these are the things that I'm, 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 I'm thinking about and, and, and talking about at the heart of it is if you are, a right of center person or a left of center person, or if you are a right wing person, left wing person, if you're a Republican or a Democrat, if you're a liberal or a conservative, it's very possible that that's just the way you were made. You were made that way. There are personality traits mm. that are consistent with those political points of view. When twins, identical twins are separated at birth, it's pretty interesting that many times they, they fall along the same political lines. And I think that's a personality thing. There's been a lot of work done on this by Jonathan Haidt and other people, but you know, um, I think that's significant. And I think that once we allow, it's almost like the, the the universe, nature just knows we need a distribution. Of, of course, it does. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Thank God. And and as and as soon as we start to accept that maybe the people you disagree with politically have no choice but to be that way, the way someone has no choice but to be gay or to be trans. Or whatever it might be, I think we'll be a little bit more compassionate. And but more we don't. Than that, you benefit from X, Y, Z. If you if do, you, spend, you ever thank you God for conservatives time. and thank God for liberals. If you have just conservatives, you'll get yourself Somalia or Afghanistan or any of the other theocracies under the Taliban, etc. Mm. Uh, last time I checked, they I didn't, they weren't putting out a whole lot of cool movies. Yeah, and I can't. Yeah, I can't imagine a single conservative that would say, you know what. That sounds pretty damn good. Yeah. So the, the the fight, the founding fathers knew. The cool thing about a bicameral legislature is, and is that power doesn't reside in one. Kick single, ass word, by the way. Yeah. To I'm bicameral. a big deal. I'm a smart guy, but Great. but it doesn't. It doesn't. The the, the 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 genius James Madison, John Jay, it's fucking Madison. We we should all be. I'm gonna get a James Madison tattoo if I ever get a tattoo. <laughs> that dude is he was about 100 pounds and five feet tall. Talk about short. Um, he was a, almost a dwarf, but he um, was such a giant intellectually. And, and you know, this idea that, you know, you, you, you have to make sure, it's not about the Bill of Rights, you have to make sure that power isn't concentrated into one group's hands. And the thing he obsessed about was factions and, and how factions could get more powerful there could be a monopoly of power in government because that's what happens. One faction is just more ruthless, more strategic, just smarter, and they can mm -hmm. get other factions to join in with them or get destroyed. That's how it, how it works. You mm -hmm. create your cabal, and then your cabal absorbs the other cabals, and before you know it, you've got the Soviet Union under Stalin. And Madison was very aware of that, and he he and John Jay and Alexander Hamilton, to an extent, and some of the other thinkers um, – obsessed but especially madison obsessed over how to and if you're a historian i'm sorry if i'm i mean i might be a little bit off on this but he obsessed on on how to avoid that well i know washington who is not a great general but was chosen for the strategic reasons of being from the south being from virginia to, to codify um all of the the colonies was chosen politically was was decent but um had really messed up, bungled some some things pretty royally in the past. Spent many years of his own life in in the wilderness, before being chosen and accepting and going whole hog into what he thought year after year was like, we're gonna get killed for this. Mm -hmm. We will die. Mm -hmm. We will we will uh, be hanged for all of this. And and probably through chewing quite literally chewing a lot of hemp probably helped him. But he he had he was not the rigid. A conservative, extremely organized, orderly mind, because that mind would have been like, we should not be dissenting. But thank God he wasn't, because then he was, he had that ability, the capability to dissent in the way that he did, and had enough of the order to lead us to a very insane, uh, us, my family's Lebanese, but lead people back then, uh, 
into an incredibly impractical victory, but then also have that liberal mindset, one of two examples in human history to win a civil war and then relinquish control well, as incredible. a general. That famous eight years saying, later. I didn't I didn't fight a war to become George the Second, right? So we want yeah. to make you king. And he said, I I George, of course, King George was the was the right. the king of England. And he said, I didn't fight this war to become George the Second. In, right. in other words, I'm not you you missed the whole fucking point of this war, guys. Right. Is that I am a president and I will be president and I will be voted out the leisure of the people. And the mm. other thing they say, there's a famous story about him saving the republic because the army was getting very, very restless and they were staging a coup d'etat um, because they weren't getting paid by Congress. Congress couldn't get its act together and they were still owed back wages. And there was a real movement among the brass, the military, these these grizzled veterans who had just come through this civil war and they and the the legend at least goes that Washington who had a real flair for for the dramatic he loved acting and loved uh, understood the power of presentation he's a very sober man he would dress a certain way very formal very formal it's a story about him shaking hands and a guy clapped his shoulder you know, and, and Washington just looked at him, you know, apparently he was a tall guy and just looked down at him like this, like, are you out of your mind and walked away, you know? Yeah. So no, there was a, a crazy mix of, there was a real liberal and yes, conservative, but there was a very, sober, you know, the, the, the presentation, my, my back is ramrod straight. And, you know, I was, he was always the man of the hour when it came to the, 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 the house is on fire. And he was why always he died. The guy. He stayed out in the cold on his horse, mending, Literally, quite literally, mending fences uh, through the rain oh, yeah. for like eight hours and I bet. caught pneumonia. I, this, I, that Did makes not total shy away sense. from duty, yeah. Makes total sense. He Suffering was, he was a long-suffering guy, and you'd never know it. But there's this famous story about him kind of, he, he, he addresses the you know, the sort of the brass, the, the, all these, the, the troops he had commanded and, and the people that were calling for this coup d'etat. And he walks up, and before he makes his speech, he pulls out his eyeglasses, and he says, Gentlemen, forgive me, for I have grown blind. I have grown almost blind in defense of my country. The idea mm. that, listen, you guys may have suffered, but so did he. Mm. So did he. And then he went on to this speech about how government is supposed to take a long time, that it's supposed to be slow, that it's supposed to be laborious, that it's supposed to be, it's supposed to... Cr creak clank along like an old rusty machine i don't know machines then but i'm that's my mm -hmm. words but but the idea being that you want government you want arguments you want this bicameral sort of you want debate fierce spirited debate and that's that's the way that a democracy you can't have direct democracy direct democracy is a disaster you can't have the people just deciding on because they'll they'll if if we had done that we wouldn't have a police department then we'd have like a crazy police the people are too hot mm. the cooling effect is Congress and then the Senate right it's a refined democracy and that's what he kind of explained to that's what we fought for guys we we fought for the fact that it's supposed to take a long time to cut your checks mm. it, it, we can't the, the, you, it's a double edged sword you can't have this kind of efficiency it's what i always get nervous about when you hear joe biden say we've got to come together and government's job is to protect the people no it's not i well yes but no sir yes but no um that i don't do like mean? well i i don't like when all the response i don't like co things like we've got to come together it sounds too collectivist and i don't like um when somebody says government's job our job trust us our job is to protect you kiss my ass all tyrants all tyrants use that as an excuse this is for the people this is for humanity mm. this is for the people napoleon said it hitler said it stalin said it Pol Pot said it, Mao said it. And sometimes we gotta crack some eggs to make an omelet, but trust me, this is it's fine. Mm. I'll put twenty million of you in the grave because this is, you know, we're we're trying to modernize, dude. Mm. We're trying to modernize. That's why they call that's why I changed my name to Joe Steele. Mm. Mr. Stalin, you know. So you better be real careful of people like that. When Justin Trudeau says these these truckers have unacceptable views, huh? 
Unacceptable by your metric? Okay. Okay, Mr. Tyrant. Okay, you little prince. You never done a day's work. You you you're a little prince. You've been behind very expensive. That. Yeah, he did. Being behind very expensive walls. And I think when you when you I think we're way too complacent. I think that people are way too trusting of government and its ability, its ability to equalize the playing field, its ability to protect us. I think you need government, very complicated organism. They do a lot of good things, but you better be careful when you start when you start talking about how benevolent you got to get the right people in that's all right mm. no yeah well no. it's yeah you could put the that's one of the things that is so great about this balance of the u.s of you have dc and then you have something like silicon valley and that's more of a both are more of mindsets than they are just geographical plays especially now because there's been a, a large texodus from san francisco and silicon valley that I was part of, uh, go LA, and this this balance is so unique that it it's in both. It, it actually isn't surprising at all that it's in the same country because it it was. Uh, we've always rebelled against government, and it's literally that is America is rebellion. Well, as I think George government. Washington said, the government should be treated as a necessary evil. Right, govern yeah, best by which governs least and. And that old adage, and it's something within Silicon Valley, you learn so quickly that four dedicated individuals, two dedicated in individuals, will they will run circles around an incumbent. No matter who's in charge of Twitter, they're not going to run as fast as a dedicated team with a really key earned insight that they earn through 18 months of being in the wilderness, finding it, and then being able to run with that truth. That's right. They will... They will ultimately, every company has this same arc. Yeah. Every company, there isn't a single company that doesn't have uh, this up and down arc. And it is this um, ethos within America, which embodies itself, I think, innovatively in, in Silicon Valley oftentimes, which is like, oh, God, the truth and a pretty dedicated attitude. It is, there is nothing that can match that with a small team that's running with those two things and truth dedication and a large team doesn't even matter if you have the truth and dedication if you have if you're 5000 people if you're 150000 people on Google you're not going to be able to compete with TikTok you're yeah. not going to be able to compete with uh this this upstart outside of your purview you know search maybe you own it yeah well part of innovation is creative destruction Right. Oh God! It is it is all destroyed. Yeah, I, I've got and I worry, but that's why I worry when socialists and people talk about you know government's got to equalize the playing field. They're, they if you stop creative destruction, oh boy, you know you you better be you're just not going to have the kind of innovation you need. Mm. You got to allow people to come up with ideas that destroy a business. It sucks, but it's true. Mm -hmm. It's kind of part of what happens. I mean, you can be protectionist for just so long. It, the, 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 you know, I'm in a union, so I want to be careful when I say this, but the problem with the, with unions is they get too powerful and they go on strike and they say we want higher wages. Well, somebody has to pay for that. And what happens is, you, you, you know, we have a global marketplace now. So if you want to raise wages and, you know, like the, uh, the, the auto workers union did in Detroit, what happens is you just don't compete. Oh, it's ha it, it is just, happening in inter entertainment. And I, I, massive, yeah. I'm sure you're seeing it. Yeah. You can record a podcast for an hour that people watch yeah. on YouTube. I will watch an hour long podcast so quickly over a hundred million dollar Netflix movie. I know. Like, and, and it's not like, well, it's I'm not, not, I don't you, can, you may as well use legacy media. I mean, le legacy, there's a reason CNN doesn't get nearly the views that Rogan does. And it's not even about liberal or it's just the Rogan's more interesting. CNN doesn't have the ability to actually get into a, the, the weeds of, of the nuances behind someone's point of view. Right. I mean, they, they, it's or for that matter, Fox, it's, it's hard because they 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 they're just dealing with a different set of priorities. They're looking at ratings and that's an old antiquated way of looking at things. And mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it, that's, and it's and it is I mean, I'm finding it obviously much more interesting why I'm clicking on this versus that. This maybe is $2,000. This thing on 
Netflix or an Apple TV was maybe a hundred million. Mm -hmm. And, and there's, there's a, uh, I love this, the concept within, within Hinduism, the three tri triumvirate gods are God of creation, God of uh, maintenance, and God of destruction. They have a, and I remember when I first heard that when I was maybe like 19 or 20, I was like, they have a, they worship a God of destruction. Mm -hmm. we're, we're so used in the West, mm -hmm. destruction is anything that takes down the creation that is divine, yeah. that is the world, is working against the creation, is is the devil. Versus the the East where you have a reverence for destruction to the point where they're uh, Shiva's, the God, well, Shivites, it, it, they're saying this is the best of the three. Well, because it doesn't, because, because a better way of saying it is it, it, it doesn't last forever. It's not supposed to. Nothing is going to last forever. Your company... Your 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 way of thinking has got to be malleable. You've got to adjust all the time, hmm. or you just won't. It, it's exactly what I was saying about, like with Shotokan Karate or something, where you stand in one place and you think you're going to block all coming blows. Hmm. It's not going to work, dude. It's not going to work. You you you, the, the, you unless you understand how to check kicks, you're going to get your your calf kicked out from under you, and or you're going to get taken down, whatever it is. And you've got to be able to, you've got to be, you've got to keep updating your, your software. You've got to learn, unlearn and relearn all the time. Yeah. And if you don't do that, man, you're not keeping up with, you're not going to be able to do it. You're going to get swallowed, man. You're right. going to get taken to the mat or whatever. So all these metaphors are, are apt, you know, that's, it's, that's the value coming all the way back to martial arts. That's why studying martial arts or getting good at something is important. And I also think that if you want to learn about yourself, you know, if you really want to learn about yourself, you know, really try to get good at something because you'll you'll come up against yourself a lot. You'll you'll have defeatist thoughts. You'll have shitty days where you just don't want to do it. You'll have these soul numbing days. It's just some days you just get tired of doing it. You don't want to do it. You don't even want to be good at it anymore. Hmm. You don't. You don't really. You no, know, you don't even care. Like. Some days I'm like, oh, look, I'm making people laugh. Well, I don't give a fuck anymore. Well, that's when I know I got to go back to writing and surprising myself and coming up with something original. How? Do, what is the day in the life of a comedian? Like when you say just writing, sex, are you sitting? Just sex. Oh, yeah? Yeah, dude. dude lifting that's what and I thought. Fucking and, that's what... fucking and, and lifting, bro. <laughs> I pump dude. out, I yeah, pump that's... out, and then I pump. You know okay, what well, I mean? Okay, well, let's move on to the next topic because oh, that's sorry. actually exactly what I thought. Good, it was. good, good, good. No, what is, when, when you say writing, is that is that... Writing it's always 500 words or is it writing jo jokes? What do you, if like, I don't write, I, I, I hate myself. What is writing? Writing a thousand words, writing, no, writing concepts no, for uh, a joke. Writing is trying to answer questions. What am I afraid of? You know? Oh really? Yeah. So it's not like, what am I ashamed of? You know, um, I key into what's bothering me. Like I was thinking about when do you age. do it? Walk me through a, an entire day. I'll take a, I'll take a of... subject. I'm 55 and, I, and and the conversation I have with 55, other 55 year olds is so different and depressing compared to the conversations I had when I was in my thirties. When you're in your thirties, <laughs> it's all about the future. When you're in your fifties, nobody gives a shit about your vision board. If you have a vision board in your fifties, throw it away. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't care what your plans are by the time you hit 60. You know, I don't care. And by the way, because when you hit 60, there's nothing you could accomplish that anybody would be excited about. Like if you're like, I made $10 billion and I am the president of the United States, people would be like, Oh, well, you had 60 years. I mean, it's not that impressive, <laughs> right? I mean, you're 60, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what 60-year-olds do. So mm -hmm. there's nothing you can do. So th th I'm interested in that topic. I'm, 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 I'm thinking a lot about what it means to be that age. And that's what you're writing about, like today. Walk today, me, yeah, walk yeah, me yeah. through, yeah, a day in the life of a. Of it's a what I'm with, but it all comes down to what I'm afraid of. What I'm well, no, no. About. I mean, like, I want as detailed of an answer as possible. Of like, when you wake up. I, I, I write best when I'm moving. So I walk, you know, I walk um, or I pace on my roof deck while I'm looking what at time? the ocean. I want, I want I wake every up at, little I, I try, detail. If I can wake up before, if I can wake up at seven, it's great. Earlier is better um, while my brain is still, so still soft. So because what that does is it gets me, it gets me thinking about a problem, solving an issue, Right. Let's take uh, how do I raise my son to be a man in the 21st century when 
even saying you're a man is a liability. Mm. <laughs> even even defining masculinity is already anachronistic. Mm -hmm. And while I teach my son to be a man, is it the equivalent of him of teaching him how to start a fire with two sticks and tie knots? I mean, is 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 the information I'm giving him about that relevant? Is it anachronistic information? Things are changing. This kid's on his computer all the time. He's 10. Hmm. He might be right and I might be wrong. I'm trying to instill in him values and how to communicate with his body physically so he can apply that to other things. All right. All right. Maybe. But I but I mean, if, if, if I want to drill him on education and education is just knowledge, well, he can just ask Alexa. You mm -hmm. know, he can ask Alexa what the capital of Nigeria is. It's not very hard or what what how to convert kilos to pounds and th those are the types of things you're thinking well yeah so that, that would be something that i start to think about because it's bothering me i might have woken up in the middle of the night and it, it was just nagging at me do you sleep well no you, no what no. time do you wake, wake i wake up at four usually full of worry but then what i do is i i i go pee or something and i i say oh wait 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 i don't know i'm i'm on i'm on the, i'm on my journey my journey is that I want to, I'm going to try to be the, the, the per, I want to try to be the version of myself I never thought was even possible. I mean, I'm really serious. I want to, I want to be, I want to be the hero in the Brian Callen movie. And I mean, that requires taking a responsibility for everything and, and actually a lot of courage. And so at four, you and I, you'll, just... I mean, I don't think anybody will know it. I just, I just want to know that I'm not afraid of death. I mean, I'm I'm really being yeah. serious. No, I can tell. You know, so um, you know, at at four, what? Why is it? Why does that come up at four a.m. or? I don't know. Five a.m. What? I don't know, man. I think it's uh, my circadian rhythm, maybe. But um, it is when cortisol is the highest. When is that true? Yeah, the stress hormone is the highest in the morning. Yeah, well, it helps if I don't drink red wine or eat meat at night, which I don't do anymore. Yeah, it's not a good idea. Yeah. Fat and protein are good in the day, but carbs are way better for me at night. Yeah, three drinks, three drinks, servings of alcohol decrease your sleep quality uh, for a male by an average of forty three percent. Oh half, wow, half your sleep yeah, you quality. can't do that. I I never have three drinks, but even even two drinks is already a problem. Yeah, they say twenty twenty two percent at two wow. drinks. Yeah, yeah. So I try to drink. Uh, I try to not drink. Mm -hmm. I like a beer, you know, with dinner like at seven, mm. but. You know, even then, you know, I, I just try not to. No, no, red wine's a big liability. Mm. Okay, and, sorry. And, so I took you from, so at yeah. 4 a.m. You, you wake up kind of. Full of anxiety. Your, really? I haven't not woken up in the middle of the night. In the past two years, I'm now starting to sleep through the night. But in the past two years, there wasn't a night I didn't wake up full of anxiety and worry and depression and all that. What were the... Uh, I think well, just everything I've gone through and, you know, everything, just worrying about my age, worrying about staying relevant, worry about m the shift and adjusting to um, what now, all that stuff. I, I don't know. You know, was, I don't know. Maybe having children, worrying about my children. Uh, I mean, I worry about, the, uh, name it, name it. I worry about everything, right? Have you always been a worrier or is that something just in the last mm, yeah, two Yeah, but this is, now it counts more. I'm, I've, you know, now I'm on my own in a way, right? I made that that transition, that conscious decision to really rely on just myself and my imagination. And, and that wasn't the case. But it's beautiful. That wasn't the case five years? I would imagine no, as a No, I always had comic, some you... kind of, but I had so many options too. Like, I don't know. You just don't think about it. But you get older and you're like, can I keep this going? Like, you know, everything's changing. I'm competing with AI. I'm competing with computer games. I'm, competing. You know, mm -hmm. I'm in the business of getting your attention and selling tickets. I mean, Jesus. TV's over, man. You know, what am I going to do? Get a TV show and make $6? This is, they don't pay. Hmm. I don't want to act. I don't want to be away from my children. I don't want that. I don't want to be in New Mexico on the set somewhere doing a movie nobody's going to watch. Making, you know, it's not the same anymore. The whole business has changed so radically. And, and, and so all of that stuff is stuff I worry about. Um, but then there's something so beautiful about it because it really... It really forces me to have faith in myself, my imagination, my own power, and being able to stand on this island alone and really, really open my open the channels to new possibilities. And I, that's what I mean by being 
embracing the hero, not the victim, embracing the hero, not the child, embracing the man, the fully realized adult, and not, not Peter Pan anymore. Does within with a podcast focused on the psychology and the psych psychological side of creation, I, I want to ask about the the last two years and just for listeners, you and I have chatted about it a little bit, but for listeners that not Shaden Freud, not uh wanting to come for for gossip or drama but for listeners that imagine just there's a listener out there that cares deeply about you and just wants to know what the last two years has been like and we've again we've touched on it but just as a friend i i care deeply about you and would like to know what it has been like that maybe from the lens of what are the parts that anyone could expect uh, from the outside looking in. And I've been in the wilderness too, so I, I really have an intimate familiarity in, in some ways. But then what are the parts that, some, that someone wouldn't expect? In, yeah, the challenges are, so let's say you get canceled or let's say somebody, whatever happens to you, um, you, you say, say something happens to you that, that takes everything away from you that you've worked on. Is that, and that's what it felt like? Yeah. Um, it's such a betrayal, man. It's just, it's like everything about it is like, even though you have your friends and people know who you are and you know who you are, um, the world can suck. The world can suck. And, and it's nasty. It's a nasty place because there are people. The best way to say it is you realize, when you realize that there are people out there that want to destroy you, they want you, I mean, dead. Mm. They want to kill you. Worse than dead, but and they want your children to not have you anymore, and they want to take your children away from you. They want you to suffer to that degree. They want to watch your children starve. I mean, for real, mm -hmm. there are people that want your total annihilation, but they want you alive so you can, so they can revel in in your pain. That that that's for all of us. There mm -hmm. are people who are really, they get off on it. They're jealous. They don't know that they 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 hate existence. We just know that there are people like that out there. Um, and so that can shake your foundations, your faith in humanity. That can shake your joy. That can shake your um, your your childlike playfulness. That can shake your creativity for sure, because so much of your creativity may very co well come from a place of optimism, and faith in humanity. Yeah. yeah, but also optimism that it's all good, man. But it's not always all good. And it's dark, and it's an awful thing. I don't know if you've ever witnessed a violent crime, but I saw this gang member shoot, try to kill somebody. With, he shot, he emptied his Glock into a car. He missed the guy, thank God, and they took off. And I was so depressed for four days later, and my buddy who's a special guy. I said, dude, I'm so depressed. And he goes, yeah, Brian, that's supposed to bring you to your knees. You saw someone try to destroy another human being, two young men. That's not supposed to be okay for you. That's supposed to fuck you up. That's supposed to give you PTSD. And so let's call it PTSD with all due respect to soldiers who've been through terrible things. But let's just call it that for... Oh, for, yeah. I don't think that that's for a... anybody um, who's been through anything I don't like think this. It's a, that's a reach. I think for... There is something... When you lose everything you've worked for, financially and creatively, creatively, when you've been public humiliated, whatever it might be for whoever, that's, there, there is PTSD that, 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 mm -hmm. that, that comes with that. And the challenge isn't rebuilding... You can rebuild if you're a tough fuck. If you if you just, you know, it's a little bit like being a, you know, you just put your head down and you just do those push-ups in the rain. You mend that fence even though it's raining and you're cold and your fingers are numb. You, you know, you can get good at that. You can get good at uh, uh, um, kind of avoiding. Shutting down. Becoming yeah, less. yeah, yeah. You just become hard. You can mm -hmm. be hard. Shut it, shut it off and just go, right? Okay. But that's not really the challenge. That's actually... That's actually, that's, that's good. That's all good. It's like a bypass. But it doesn't make you creative. It mm. doesn't, how, how do you stay funny when you don't feel funny? How do you stay funny when you feel vengeful and furious? How do you feel funny? How do you, how do you stay funny? How do you come up with funny? How do you come up with original ways to make people laugh when you're depressed, mm. when you're wounded, when you're terrified, when you're 
beyond angry when you can't sleep. That's tough. That's, that's the challenge. That's the challenge that should be embraced. That's the real fight because it requires forgiveness. It, it really does. It requires forgiveness and acceptance, true acceptance for the fact that life is always going to be full of some kind of chaos, that you're a limited creature and that you can't protect yourself against all the slings and arrows, that you can't protect yourself against the things that um, are out there to destroy you, that you will be isolated, that you will be depressed, that you will be afraid, that you won't feel brave because you won't be brave. That is something that you start to accept. And that might be the beginning of something called wisdom. But once you accept that and you say to yourself, oh, this is wild, because this is an amazing experience that is going to inform my next creative endeavor. And maybe it's too fresh and it won't inform this block of creativity, but it will the next block of creativity. Maybe it needs time to marinate and sink into my bones and change me fundamentally. Maybe, maybe, maybe it has, um, but it definitely has ushered in not cynicism, but a new resolve. It was an angel that 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 sort of strengthened my bones, man. And I and I and I think when you can suffer well, when you can suffer well, and when you can suffer productively, and all of us can, all of us can suffer productively, and all of us can suffer well. That's a choice you make when you when you set your eyes and your focus on the best version of yourself, because the best version of yourself i.e. the hero, is waiting for you. It's waiting for you. You just have to direct your energy in that direction. You have to move in that direction. And if you keep your eyes on that prize, on that possibility, on that archetype, you will be okay. You will come out of it with a new equilibrium and a new understanding and probably, I'm daring to say, faith in in light in the light that is always closer than you think when you are in the darkness mm. that you may be in the desert but i promise you the promised land is a lot closer than you actually think it is that the dawn always comes after the darkest hour you know all that all that all those metaphors and then you start to realize that all that shit that i learned came from art all that stuff I'm talking about right now, all this poetic shit I'm dropping came from the literature I read and the movies I saw and the stories I heard. And that's why art is so important. And the only way to make art is to create. And that's why for all those founders out there, what you're doing is you're creating a better way to do something. You saw a need that wasn't being met and that's what keeps our economy going. The rest is bureaucracy and what you need and 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 you know and maintenance and all those things but you know that's part of what creativity is about so keep feeding yourself keep feeding yourself good stories i think that's the value of literature i think that's why you study latin and greek and they may be dead like latin may be a dead language and maybe shakespeare isn't relevant to the nitty-gritty of your life but it's what makes our culture and what makes a person interesting. What was some literature that, all of or it. art that, all you, of it, man. over the last two all years that you're like, this is, uh, I mean, carries extra weight now. Um, is there any story or movie that? Lord Jim. What's that? Lord Jim is a Joseph Conrad book that's about a young man who has had was idealistic. And then had a fall from grace and spent his time running from it. And um, his greatest strength was his greatest liability. That's a great book. But there are a lot of great books to read. Tell me more of what was his. I mean, it's it's a it's a long it's a long motif. But he, you know, he he uh, jumped onto a life raft when he should have gone down with the ship, but the ship made it. The ship didn't sink, mm. and he was court-martialed. And he spent his time 
<clears throat> being a merchant marine, I can't remember the word for it, but he goes from port to port all over the world, mostly in the east, to run away from the fact that he was disgraced. And uh, but he was such an idealistic young man. He was such a he held so strongly to an old fashioned ideal, a little bit like the way in World War One when you wore your plumes in your hat and you rode in a battle on your horse with your chest out. Problem was they didn't count on the fact that the Germans had machine guns and artillery that made a mockery of your old chivalric, I don't know if that's a word, but your chivalry, your mm. old ways. We've moved on, my friend. When the crossbow was invented, it took, it turned those knights in shining armor that turned that into a coffin, a mm. shiny coffin, because that arrow could pierce that armor. So you better be careful that the armor you're wearing isn't your liability. Yeah. Yeah. So, but there's a lot of, I mean, if I could think about it, there are a lot of great stories, literature that, um, that I think will inform, will help you in, in your moments when you're cast into the desert and you'll probably th been thrown into the desert. Suddenly there'll be no warning the way Ahab was pulled into the sea by the white whale. Hmm. You know, it happens very quickly <laughs> without ceremony. Did you know it instantaneously? Did you kind of have this, like, there will be growth on the other side of this? Did you, when my sister passed away when I was 15, I think I just knew from that, maybe an hour before finding yeah. out, um, okay, if she passed away, there's there, there will be a, a necessary beauty in this and but that came james not from i don't think that came because of a jungian archetype i think that came because you 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 saw that represented in the great stories mm -hmm. you know every every but great did you, and did you know that did you the day no of the no. day after no how long did it take no. you before you said okay there could be grace i, I thought this. it was over man i just uh you always think it's over, you know. You, you I definitely. And the, you, my, you don't know. I mean, you don't know. It's all darkness. You're just. You're just trying to. You're just trying to. You're just trying to find your way, man. You're just trying to figure it out. I had a lot going on. I had a lot going on. A divorce, COVID. I had a lot going on, man. So. When did it start to turn? Where you said, it, you used the phrase a few minutes ago of. It's, well, uh, I'd say they, we, 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 I, a think. friend of mine reminded me, and it was why I was never really quiet, never will be. But it, it was when my friend reminded me, he goes, "Everybody who knows you, everyone who knows you, knows that it's not it's not so. And most importantly, you know, you know in your heart, it's not." And I went, "That's oh oh yeah, oh yeah." <clears throat> oh, that's right. I've been a good guy. I'm, I'm a flawed guy. I'm a fucking moron. I'm insensitive sometimes. I'm clueless all the time. My girlfriend just read me the riot act because I was mad at her and yelling at her because I said something. She goes, no, you did say that. And I go, I did not say that. And she goes, really? And she just showed me video of me saying <laughs> that I don't like any of her t-shirt designs. <laughs> and I mean, I, I, mean I, I felt like I was like, I literally was like, sorry. Mm. moron okay wrong you know clueless yeah but i know who i am i know what i'm not you know mm. and i think that was what gave me strength you key into who you are you key into you have to remember sometimes man you have to be reminded that you know it's really easy to beat up on ourselves it's really easy to dislike yourself mm. and there's nothing wrong with that sometimes having a sense of your own Inadequacy. Um, Quite powerful. It's, it's powerful. There's nothing wrong um, with it. You don't have to believe in yourself, but you know you should also be willing to um, give yourself a break, man, and and also give yourself some credit for how hard you've tried to be where you are. Mm. It took me a long time to get to be this person, and I like myself. It's also a large part of myself that I like and I'm proud of, and I've worked hard to be this person. So no apologies. Where are you today with uh, just the psychological side of creation, good. that creativity? I'm that good. Do you do you I'm have you ever heard of the fuck right now? Do you really? I'm yeah, creative you feel as fuck. 
and 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 I'm and and I you know, I sense that from you. I, and, and I'm 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 crushing rooms. Like I'm t- I gotta go because I gotta go down to San Diego. That's right, James. Yeah. I can't okay. sit here with your. I need some mag- <laughs> I need some magic mind because yeah. my 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 my, my, my wife to be is obsessed now. Yeah. So you fucked up all my friends because everybody's <laughs> drinking this shit. I want stock, bro. Because yeah. I'm oh. I'm turning people into it. Give I know, me, dude. Give me is... fucking stock. But I... but more importantly, um, I gotta go do stand up. Do you mind? No, I I hear you, but well, you you can't. Li- you got to give at least two minutes to to folks listening. Of, do you believe in a concept of post traumatic growth? A hundred percent. And you said that the other day to me, and I didn't stop thinking about it. Post traumatic growth is the whole point. What are we gonna do? You're gonna let the devil win? Really? Are you? No. No matter what happens to you, if you're in a fucking jail cell alone, if you're in a concentration camp, this is Viktor Frankl's book. Mm. There is there is growth to be had. That's the whole point. That you are more than just your appetites. You're more than just your your flesh and blood. This is the whole fucking point. You call me a romantic if you want. I I live for that. That shit is the best. Mm. You know, this is why we admire people like gandhi or martin luther king or jesus christ or whatever the buddha or they put a high, an ideal you know with the man for all seasons uh thomas sir thomas more who refused to accept the english church and stuck by the catholic church because he was a catholic and henry the eighth was like i'm gonna cut your head off and he's like well guess you are but these are my principles this is who i am i'm more than my appetites and the fucking, you know, all of us, we're all shamed by those stories because all of us know in our heart that we couldn't do that. We take the convenient route, but at least, fuck man, at least we can, at least we have something to reach for. It's good to be shamed by heroes because maybe if you're shamed enough, you'll become that hero. You know, I mean, fuck. Was, was it, was it, uh, was it, um. Nelson Mandela, who refused to renounce the ANC and violence in the cause of his, you know, mm. I mean, they wouldn't let him out of jail because he said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to say what you want me to say. So he slept on a fucking stone floor for 33 years. He had a bad back, mm. you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, some people are willing to go through some shit, man. Mm. Well, I can't do that, but I can try. Mm. clumsy effort can i get out of here dude did you, you people write all that stuff you down you, i was i love our conversations and like i just to bring it back to where it started the surface area in which we can have these conversations you mentioned victor frankel one of the most fascinating things about man's search for meaning and in his book as a psychologist is that going through three concentration camps he's able to write about it from a psychologist's point of view i think there are many people in the world that i think and i'm no cosmic judge i don't know not in every room to see what's ever happened uh but f- as a friend from a friend's perspective i believe my friends and and i think that this being able to hear from you and i and i've been at the the uh mercy of a false accusation i've seen it happen to a friend where i saw what really happened I I, and so i just know that those i know that those exist and i also would rather live a life where i trust my friends and and live that way and i really love this conversation all of our conversations because you can go through something like that and bring this breadth of this cross lattice work of models and this this depth and surface area of reflection on it and ability key ability to articulate it in a way that it is it's not just anyone going through something tough it's victor frankel being able to articulate i think for you being able to reflect on it and then go back and articulate it, i think it's I think it is. It's a profound conversation. It's a profound uh, friendship, and and uh, I really appreciate you being able to, dude. You came on this. You're like, dude. I'll talk about anything, and I, I haven't had any guests on here that that has been this open or this uh, this much well, of an it's, aperture. It's helpful. I hope. 
Well, it, so dude, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to, I've told you, if it's not, I'm not going to be open and truthful, then, then what are we doing? I'm not interested in, I, I'm done. I'm done with all that. The human experience yeah. ends up being a, a pretty universal experience. So yeah. appreciate you sharing it. Thank Thanks, you, Brian. Brother. And can't wait for part two, uh, down the road. Thanks brother. All right, if you're thank in, you, if, when does this come out? This comes out in a week. All right. So if you're come to Appleton, Wisconsin, if you're there or, or Phoenix, go to BrianCallen.com if you want to come see my stand-up. Apparently, I'm hilarious. You are. All Indeed. Right. Your best stuff. Let's do it. Bye.